guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Peter. In today's video I'll test the standard M2 regulator against a regulator from Huma Air in my 177-600mm FX Pantera. I'll test uh, the regulators in three different areas. How fast they fill, how much they creep, if any, and of course to see if there's any difference in spread between the two regulators. And at the end of the video, I'll even show you how to change the regulator in the gun. So let's start out and see how fast the regulator fills the plenum. Let's start out with the M2 regulator. 960. Nine hundred sixty three And now let's take a look at how fast the plenum fills with the regulator from Huma. Nine hundred fifty six. 953 949 As you could see, the fill time with the amp regulator was close to 10 seconds, whereas with the regulator from Huma, it was filled up within a few seconds. And this is actually uh, an experience I've done uh, with uh, quite a few guns uh, based on the dynamic block. I've had the experience in uh, this gun, I've had it in uh, a 700mm uh, dynamic that I had. I have a friend who has the uh, 700mm Pantera as well and I've seen it uh, in a video of what I would call a high profile uh, uh, YouTuber in uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, uh, within the FX uh, range. So um, I know that this is a common problem uh, in this block, but I want to say that I have the M2 regulator installed in my impact, and in that gun, there is absolutely no problem at all. It feels very fast. I even made a video, and you can see it uh, right here, uh, where I changed the, the, the piston in the, in the uh, original um, regulator uh, with the brass piston. Um, so if you're interested to see how uh, an amp regulator really uh, can uh, function, you should uh, check out this video. But now let's take a look at creep. What is creep? Um, when you've shot the gun and the plenum has been filled, um, it should uh, remain stable. It should not uh, climb further. So what I'll test in this video is to see uh, the difference between the two regulators uh, in different scenarios. I'll test them uh, when shooting them and leaving the gun for two minutes and when I'm leaving it for 10 minutes and when I'm leaving it overnight. So I'll see um, how much uh, the, <clears throat> the plenum fills uh, within this resting period and I'll see if this creep has an effect on the velocity when you start firing the gun again. But let's start out and see how the regulators perform after uh, two minutes of rest. Starting out with the amp regulator. 960. Okay, so now we'll leave it for um, two minutes to see um, how much creep it, um, it has and um, if there's any change in, um, in the velocity. Okay, it seems like it's um, stabilizing at uh, 103, so uh, a six bar increase from the last shot. So what I'll do now is um, to um, to show you um, what um, what the shots looks like uh, after a break like this, I'll just uh, record the screen here. Okay, so this is after yeah a bit more than two minutes. Nine hundred. 
160. Okay, so <laughs> apparently there's no difference. I'll just take a, a few more and respect the 10 seconds in between. Yeah, it seems like there's no um, there's no effect on um, uh, on the velocity after two minutes of uh, not touching the gun. And now let's make the same test with the regulator from Huma installed in the gun. Nine hundred fifty-eight. And then I'll leave it for two minutes to see uh, if there's any change in. Uh, regulator pressure and in uh, velocity. Okay, so now we're approaching two minutes. It seems like the regulator has climbed uh, maybe one. And now I'll take a few shots to see what the velocity, if there's any change in velocity. 960. <laughs> nah. So as you can see, there was a difference in creep between the two regulators. The amp regulators had uh, like five bars of creep, whereas the regulator from Huma only had uh, like one. The difference in velo velocity was yeah, practically non-existing, so uh, leaving your gun for, for two minutes doesn't really have an effect uh, with either of the regulators. But now let's do the same test again, but uh, extend the break to 10 minutes. 958. Okay, so now let's leave the gun uh, for 10 minutes to see how the regulator handles uh, a, break like, a break like that. So now it's been 10 minutes of waiting and the regulator has, uh, has settled on uh, 105 bar. So that's like an 8 bar increase uh, over 10 minutes. So now let's see what it's done to, uh, to the velocity when you just start uh, shooting. I'll take some, some shots just, just, uh, until it, um, it, it gets to around these uh, 960 feet per second that we were shooting before. 944 956 Okay, that was that was pretty quick. It was just two shots. 958 yeah. Two three shots and uh, and you're back at the um, at the um, the normal uh, velocity. So that was an 8 bar creep and a 14 uh, feet per second drop in velocity. But on the positive side, uh, it did recover uh, the velocity uh, after a couple of shots. So now let's take a look with the humor regulator installed. 963. regulator has climbed two bar so let's check the velocity 965 yeah so it climbed uh, two feet per second so with the amp regulator uh, gaining like eight bar and dropping uh, 14 uh, feet per second in velocity and the Humor regulator only raising like uh, two bars and uh, no change uh, in uh, velocity. It seems like the uh, regulator from, from Humor is uh, the winner of the 10 minute test. But let's see what happens uh, when you leave the gun overnight. And let's start out with the amp regulator and remember that the velocity that we shot uh, on the night before was uh, 958 feet per second. As you could see, the regulator had uh, increased by almost 10 bar, and the first shot it had dropped uh, 
30 feet per second but the positive size once again was that it uh, only took uh, one shot to recover the full velocity. So now let's move on and see how the regulator from Huma performed on the overnight test. And as you could see, uh, this could not be done any better because there was uh, no climb in uh, the pressure on the regulator and the uh, velocity was exactly the same as uh, I shot the day before. So the winner of the overnight test is also the regulator from Huma. If there's any of you who has stumbled on why the velocity goes down when the pressure on the regulator goes up, uh, here is the explanation. For some of you, it's uh, yeah, basic knowledge, but there are some who, uh, yeah, who, who doesn't know this, so that's why this uh, explanation. So you'll have to understand that if you have the valve here and uh, you have a pr uh, the pressure uh, on uh, from the, the plenum here, if this pressure is um, say uh, 100 bar um, it takes a, a certain amount of force from the hammer to open the valve and let through uh, the, um, the right amount of air to get the velocity that you're aiming for. But if you uh, have this uh, creep of uh, say uh, 5, 10 uh, bar, so you go from uh, uh, 100 to 110. Uh, imagine that there's a there's a, a stronger guy standing here uh, at the other end holding the valve uh, in, in place. So if you're just hitting uh, the valve with the same amount of power uh, because you don't adjust uh, the, the hammer at all, it, uh, it will not open the valve as much because there's a greater force holding the valve back. So if the door uh, doesn't open, the valve doesn't open, and uh, there's uh, as much because of the higher pressure here, uh, there's, there will simply not uh, be enough air uh, coming through the valve to get the velocity that you're looking for. So that's why the uh, velocity drops if the um, pressure uh, on the plenum um, is rising without you adjusting the hammer. And now let's look at the spread. And when I'm saying spread, I mean the difference in the highest and the lowest velocity on a shot string. So it has nothing to do with how far apart the shots is uh, on your target when you shoot. I've had uh, multiple questions uh, and answered with, with something uh, regarding the spread and people misunderstood. So this is the explanation. Spread is the difference between the fastest and the lowest uh, shot in a shot string. So. Let's start out uh, with the amp regulator and um, I'll take a 10 shot string and uh, I'll, um, I'll take a, a 10 second uh, break in between each shot. So if you feel that uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this is going too slow, you can just uh, fast forward and, uh, and go uh, yeah, to, to the end of the, the shot string. But anyway, here is the uh, test of spread with the amp regulator. Nine 
And as you can see, this was not uh, all that impressive. It uh, it had a spread of uh, 24 feet per second, and I'm very sorry that I uh, I did not record the screen. Actually, it was uh, only uh, three shots that uh, that spoiled the whole thing. There was um, one at uh, 949. There was one at uh, 939, and uh, one uh, once again at uh, 949. The rest was actually between 960 and uh, 963. You've seen videos from me before with a, with a beautiful spread and as you can see it is possible to, to get those sh uh, short uh, spread strengths but um, eventually there will be one that just uh, drops like that and I haven't been able to, uh, to figure out uh, why this happens. So that's why I uh, came up with the idea that maybe it was uh, the regulator and maybe it was time for me to uh, check the regulator from Humor. But now let's take a look at the shot string with the humor regulator. And as you could see, this was a much, much better string with a spread of only 7 feet per second. And I'll say that this, uh, this spread actually matches what I, I can easily uh, shoot with my, with my impact. So that makes me very, very satisfied with installing the humor regulator in the Pantera. Before we move on, I just want to share my experiences uh, with spread in the dynamic block. Uh, as I said before, uh, I've had the experience with uh, like three or four uh, different um, guns based on the dynamic block, and they have all had this uh, this uh, spread issue. So, yeah, uh, having installed the new regulator, that definitely helped. But um, when I received uh, this gun and the 700 millimeter dynamic, the spread was like, yeah perhaps uh, 30 or 35 i mean it was uh, it was absolutely horrible but what i did to reduce it uh, was to uh, take out the regulator and lube it up and uh, and then polish the springs there's a, there are lots of videos out there on how to polish the springs so i'll not go go into that one and that actually helped uh, quite a lot and 
after that because I, I thought that it was not all that great and then because uh, yeah I was, uh, sh I was mainly sh I was only shooting slugs in my Pantera uh, I turned to uh, to Humair Air and they sent me a, a pin probe and their V2 transfer port and this also improved uh, the, the spread but uh, it mainly uh, improved the velocity with a gain of yeah, I think it was like uh, between 35 and 40 feet per second just by installing that so I have done uh, some things to uh, improve this uh, this spread issue but uh, there is no doubt at all that installing the humor regulator has been the biggest step of them all so let's draw a very short conclusion the humor regulator is a very very good idea to install in your uh, dynamic block it simply makes it a, a much much better gun and i can't wait uh, to get it out on long range to, to see um, <clears throat> how it has in improved the performance and i can't thank the guys from uh, humair enough uh, for sending me this uh, regulator and with that said now i'll show you how to uh, install a, a regulator in the dynamic block um, and let me warn you, I am doing the best that I can, so don't expect too much. I am no airbox in showing you how to do this, but I just have uh, quite a few people asking me uh, when I change something on my guns uh, to, to show it uh, and how it's done uh, in the video. So, um, yeah, it's your own fault if you want to watch me uh, show you how it's done. But uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is uh, how it's done. Now it's time to install the humor regulator and I'll do my very best to show you how it's done. Before you start working on the gun and anything around the regulator, it's very important to degas uh, the whole system. As you can see, I've already uh, taken off the bottles, so only thing left now is to degas the planner. And now that it's been degassed, let's start uh, taking out the amp regulator. In order to get to the regulator, uh, you need to first up to remove the, the handle. Next is to loosen these uh, three screws. And the last one to loosen is uh, this one down here. It's important to use the right allen key. And there, just put it gently aside. And then what I like to do is uh, to remove the trigger blade. This is a very small allen key, it's a 1.3 millimeter. Having this removed, it's easier to work on the regulator. So what you do now is once again take the right allen key and then remove the piston here. There. And be very gentle with this, you don't want to scratch it. And then you have free access to to removing the the housing here, like this. No brute force is needed when removing or working uh, around the regulator or for, for that matter uh, any part of this gun. Uh, there, you have the regulator with the springs and everything on it. So basically what you need right now is to install the new regulator. So what you get when you receive the regulator is the housing itself, the piston and some small nylon discs and of course the springs. So first up is to to loop up this uh, o-ring on the on the regulator housing here. Just a a tiny coat, no need to overdo it, but still it needs to uh, to have enough grease so the regulator won't leak. Then you take the, the regulator piston 
and you loop up the O-ring. Like this. Once again, don't over loop it. And what you also want to do is uh, to loop it up here for, for the pistons to move, uh, sorry, for the springs to move freely. Like that. And then you take the springs and loop those as well. And for this, I like to, to use uh, another type of, of loop <clears throat> because it's it's not as as heavy as um, as the, the usual grease. So just take uh, like one or two drops, and then then just um, just loop them up like this. You don't need to uh, make them swim in, <laughs> in in loop. Just make sure that they're, they're, that they're covered. This is how it's done, and make sure that it they don't get any uh, any any grease. Uh, sorry, uh, any dirt on them. But before you install them to um, the piston, it's very important to uh, to follow the instructions on the Humus web page. Uh, when uh, getting the regulator, you get this this card, and uh, you can scan this uh, QR code to get the fittings uh, instructions. And let me show you here how to stack the springs. When following the link or the QR code, this is the document that you'll receive. There's a lot of useful information that I'll strongly advise you to read uh, before starting to install your regulator on your, on your gun. But the figure that I am looking for, because I'm installing this uh, extra high pressure regulator on my Pantera, is this figure 3. It tells me that I need to use 8 of the nine supplied springs and how they need to be stacked. And after that you can see that there's a lot of useful information as well. So a very, very useful document supplied by Huma Air. So now having mounted the springs on the piston, it's time to install it into the regulator housing. But very important, before you do this, uh, you need to install this uh, this nylon disc into the, the regulator housing like this and in order to get it in place uh, I'm using this uh, this cotton what is called cotton stick uh, and just gently um, push it uh, into place to the bottom of the regulator housing. It's very important not to use uh, anything metal to so that you you scratch this uh, this little disc if you don't install this uh, nylon disc, your regulator won't work. So remember this and of course remember to, to do the right stacking of the springs. So now it's basically just to uh, attach these two parts like this. And your regulator is uh, ready to, to be installed. But now before I install it into the gun, I just want to take a look at these uh, two regulators next to each other. Um, you can see, yeah. They look uh, almost uh, identical, but the, there are some uh, some differences. So, yeah, let's get it installed into the gun. To install the regulator into uh, to the gun, you need a flathead screwdriver like this, so that it matches the the, the threads or what do you say here on the um, on the regulator. Now, insert it into the gun, and then. Gently um, screw it into uh, into place. One thing that is actually a very good idea is to um, to release this um, this trigger pin in order to have uh, enough space um, to work with. You just uh, put it back into place when you've done installing. And I forgot to mention that this uh, this pist piston in the in the regulator, you need to turn that, that down so that it's flush uh, with the body. So now that it's uh, reached the bottom, you just give it a, a little tuck. There's no need to be violent uh, when, uh, when um, turning the, the regulator into place. So 
now basically uh, it's uh, back to uh, where you where it needs to be so now it's just to uh, assemble the gun again starting out with the trigger blade that's very important because if you've mounted the whole thing and uh, your trigger blade is uh, is not installed you'll have to take the whole thing apart again Now, before I install the rest of the parts, I'd like to uh, apply uh, pressure to the gun to see if everything uh, holds tight. But before we apply pressure to the system, uh, I'd like to um, turn the, the piston uh, of the regulator as far in uh, as I can and ju then just release it a little bit to have the lowest pressure uh, possible when I, uh, I put pressure on the gun because then I can uh, tune the gun and just uh, gently uh, increase the pressure of the rig uh, as I see fit to the settings that I'm looking for. So what I do is that uh, I take a, a, a bit uh, like this, I don't know if you can, you can see it, in your mind. <laughs> anyway it's a, it's a flathead bit and then you just um, uh, put on your glasses if you're blind as a bat like me and um, insert it into to the middle. Uh, of, uh, of the regulator and then just uh, turn it uh, gently in until your feet uh, you feel um, that it, it hits the bottom don't uh, over uh, over pressure because then you'll damage the um, the, the nylon valve uh, uh, the, the nylon disc at the bottom and yeah that's not good so when you've reached the bottom you just release it just a tiny bit and then you'll have a, a very low pressure to start out with so now to the moment of truth uh, and uh, let's uh, put pressure on this whole system. The thing when you have uh, two bottles like I do, you need to uh, turn them uh, simultaneously uh, like this. And you can see, you can hear the plenum is filling. And as you can see, the regulator pressure is, uh, is very low <laughs> now. As you can see, the regulator is at uh, 33 so I'll just uh, increase uh, the pressure <clears throat> and I want to turn it to uh, say 90 bar or something like that uh, and then I can uh, I, I can do the fine tuning uh, when I get to the range past uh, 90 bar 92 93 uh, I think I'll leave it there and then just do uh, the rest of the tuning as I said uh, when I get to the range show. Now that's just left to uh, to mount the gun uh, with the uh, yeah whatever you find missing here. Um, but this is how simple it is to install the Humor Rex on your FX Pantera. And now having shown you how to install the regulator in your gun, it's time to uh, wrap up this video. So that's it. Until next time. Take care and pew, shoot safe.